This is my son Rico. This is my favorite one because, I mean, that was him right there. Pick his hands up, yeah. The, the guy that was in the front of the vehicle, he just stood right in the middle of the street and, and pointed a gun and started shooting. And when everything settled, they had killed my son. A violent drug war has erupted on the border between the United States and Mexico, and young people are caught in the middle. It's a war, and they don't care who gets in the way, you know. They don't care who gets in the way. Armand Lobenuelos never liked the idea of his son Rico crossing the border near their home in El Paso, Texas, to Juarez, Mexico, where the boy's mother lives. His worst fears were realized when the car Rico was traveling in was flagged down by men in the streets, brandishing the kind of automatic weapons favored by the drug cartels. When the driver of the car refused to stop, they were riddled with bullets. All the money, all the, all the money, all the guns, all that. All that's financed by drug use, all of that, you know. I mean, we lost our little boy. Andale, mijo. Andale. Era muy agresivo, traumado desde que lo mataron su papá. ¿Qué era el trabajo del papá? Pues me estaba con las drogas y también estar matando gente. Okay. Aliviane is a nonprofit organization in El Paso, Texas, that provides counseling to young people on both sides of the border, experiencing trauma related to the violence here. ¿Cómo fue, cómo fue que, que llegaron aquí en general a, a buscar terapia? Falleció mi papá. Lo asaltaron. No se sabe específicamente cómo, pero le dieron un golpe en la cabeza. Enfrente de nuestra casa hicieron arcofosas. Fueron 12 cuerpos, los vimos. Jesus knows too well that if you grow up in Juarez, drug-related violence is a way of life. In addition to losing his father to the violence, he lives across the street from a house that one of the drug cartels was using to stash the bodies of its rivals. Jesus watched as the police removed 12 corpses one by one. Me sentí muy mal, muy triste. Ahorita ya estamos viviendo otra guerra mundial en Juárez. Ya no se puede confiar en nadie. Allí en la cocina tenemos un montón de cuchillos. Agarrar uno y cortarme. No ha sido por toda la vida. This is the county jail of Juarez. All these guys are uh, gang members from, from Mexicles. It's uh, a bad uh, gang in the jail. Young people are not only the victims in the drug war here, they are also recruited to participate in it. We visited some of them in the Juarez County Jail. You say the, the, the cartels uh, uh, hiring uh, young people to to work in, in the crime in Juarez. Pues porque muchas veces no no tienen dinero para lo que se necesita o. Dieciocho, ¿ah? Sí. He had uh, 18 years years old. ¿Y por qué caíste aquí? Por marihuana. Sí. Uh, he had possession of marihuana. ¿Y, y cuánto te agarraron? Como the drug cartels recruit kids as young as nine years old. The kids usually start out dealing drugs locally and work their way up in the organizations. The 90% to the, the guys were arrested, uh, it's a child. ¿Cuántos años tienes? 18. ¿18 tú? 19. He said 18 and 19 years old.
¿Usted es el papá de, de muchacho? Sí, sí, el muchacho. ¿A qué se dedica su, su hijo? No, pues trabaja conmigo en la obra. ¿En la obra? Sí. ¿Y no le dijeron por qué lo detuvieron? No, pues no están diciendo nada. ¿El tatuaje que, que traes es de, de algún tipo de pandilla, alguna cosa por el ah, estilo? Es que no, por, lo, por lo mismo nos retiramos. Okay. Hace tiempo sí, sí perteneció a pandillas, pero ahora ya no, ya, ya no, trabaja con él. No, casi nunca anda en la pandilla. Yo lo traigo bien corto, no que ahorita sale a la calle a jugar maquillaje y todo ese rollo. École. Sí. Bueno, pues suerte. All the, the parents to, to the people arrested say, oh, my son is a, a good guy, but when these guys are in the streets, are dangerous. And it's not just the poor kids on the Mexican side of the border who get caught up in the drug war. These young people in El Paso, Texas, whose identities we are disguising because they fear retribution from the drug cartels for speaking out, told us about how they were recruited to smuggle drugs into the United States from Mexico. They were eventually arrested. I used to have your own friends that were involved. Money came in, like ecstasy, coke, marijuana. Yeah, they tell you that. They're, we're going to help you. You get caught, we're going to get you out. None of that's true. You get caught, especially you young kids, for the young kids. Usually the police ends up scaring you somewhere or another and you end up snitching. And they're gonna come back at you. They're gonna try to kill you or they're gonna try to get someone from your family. And kids don't understand that. They just wanna get money and get involved in it. Every night we were in Juarez, there were more violent murders. In this case, a drug dealer was shot and burned to death in his SUV. And as often as the case, the only people who wanted to talk are the neighborhood kids. ¿Escucharon cuando explotaron los vidrios? Sí, sí. ¿Se escuchó fuerte la explosión? Sí, se escuchó bien recio. ¿Y esto pasa muy seguido por aquí? No, no lo habían matado ahí. The kids watching all this all the time and uh, this kid is, is the Mexican future. But what future is this? If every day drug dealers uh, kill and the young people work to the cartels, this is not the future. Brent and Craig Renault reporting for the New York Times, Juarez, Mexico.